Today I'm going to address stopping the tick using a long tail resistor if your tremolo is set up for a speed only configuration. So the speed is the frequency of the oscillator. I'm not going to address the intensity or the depth control today which adjusts the amplitude of low frequency sine wave coming out of the amplifier side of the tremolo. Uh, three sources of tick. Uh, so this video, the next one, and the next one we're going to address amplification being set too high. Next one we'll talk about intensity and depth control configuration. Then I'm going to talk about EMF. So over time, this as a circuit heats up, cools down, the tube ages, the tick is going to come and go. So the key is to try to get the thing set up where as the tremolo ages, the tick stays away. These adjustments normally keep the tick from occurring 99% of the time. So in a common tremolo circuit, it looks like this. I talked about this in the last video. This is the oscillator. This is the amplifier. I have two test points, one on the uh, grid of the oscillator and one on the output of the amplifier. Again, these uh, it, uh, oscillate, we don't know why. They don't oscillate, we don't know why. But it, it gets down to the characteristics of the tube as it heats up. And a tube doesn't stay at heat. They drift around. And as they drift around, there's this random giving off of electrons that eventually initiates the oscillation and stays going most of the time. Okay? Uh, these aren't in parallel. And that's important to, to point out. R22 is the load of V3B. R18, 18A is the load on V3A, by the way. That establishes the load lines. So I modify the tremolo circuit a bit because I want to get down, I want to take out a few parts to make it less complicated in order to, in this video I'm going to show you how I'm going to uh, adjust the amplitude. So I'm going to get rid of a few parts because in the next video when we put the intensity control in, I have to put in more parts and this modification is going to be necessary more for that than this, but it still works the same. So here's generally your on off switch. R22, again the load for this one. You don't have to do this, but I really think it makes things a lot easier. What you're going to have to do with R20, where before they're both 750, you have to double them because the current going through this uh, cathode and this cathode are now going through a common resistor, so it's twice the current. In order to maintain the bias voltage, you're going to have to bump up that resistor. Now then, on the amplifier, it only needs 20 microfarads. You need 100 microfarads on the oscillator. That's part of this calculation. In order to sustain oscillation, this has to be, in this case, 100 microfarads. You could probably get by down to 90. Bigger is better, actually. So 100 to 125 would be better. But you keep that one and get rid of the other one. This is the tremolo signal wire. Anyway, it's, I like this configuration just a little bit better. And then you connect the grids. They're not in parallel. Parallel means I've connected the both the cathodes and the plates. This is just two independent amplifiers with a where I'm putting the signal both to this amplifier and that amplifier. They're not in parallel. That's important to understand. So what we need to do is install a tail resistor to adjust the amplification. Again, I have two videos out there in a long tail pair that explain how that works. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to put a long tail resistor here. Now then, just for a brief review, this cathode, the bias, is referenced based on the same point that these resistors are all commonly connected. And that is this point. So between here and here, you get one and a half volts for the bias. It'll be minus one and a half volts here. This is a tail resistor. Above, it actually elevates this reference point 10 volts above ground. This is going to make the oscillator more stable. And those other two uh, 
videos on long tail pair, I go in more about that, but this is what we want to do. So adjusting R1 doesn't change the uh, bias voltage, it adjusts the amplitude of TP1 and TP2. Okay? Now, the another thing you need to know about tremolo, and this just drives me a bit nuts, if it's by way they initially came out, S3, if you connect it, it's oscillating. If you disconnect it, it quits oscillating. And when you do that, it, when it quits oscillating and reconnecting it, it takes a while to warm up. So what a lot of amps would do is put the on-off switch out here, which grounds out the output signal. It's not supposed to stop the oscillator. Not supposed to. That's a key action word there. It often stops the oscillation. Have no idea why, because this should all stay oscillating. Because I'm just grounding out the output, which is on the other side of the DC blocking capacitor. It should stay oscillating. And amplifying is just no signal getting out. But just understand, once in a while I get really lucky and it stops the oscillator. Sometimes it doesn't, but most of the time it doesn't. But depending on, I guess they have mood swings and this will stop it. So don't be surprised if it does. I don't have an answer for that. I've taken that out on my tremolo. You can leave it in, but I'm going to take this out for clarity's sake, especially in the rest of this video in the next. To review, we want to adjust for a sine wave. We don't want uh, it to be too amplified because it starts flattening out and that creates a knock sound. And if it's over amplifying, you'll get this shape here that you see on the oscilloscope. And that's the tick. It's about a two kilohertz uh, note is a tick and that's audible. So while you're adjusting this, if you're in an oscilloscope, it's easy. We're looking for keeping both the uh, oscillator and, and the amplifier to this waveform uh, and adjust this one back down to this. This one needs to go back down here. If it, but if you don't have an oscilloscope, you can listen for these things. It should just be a whisper of a pump. But if you start hearing something, it's over amplifying. And the nice thing about tremolo is it just makes a puffy sound. It putters, it puffs. Uh, you won't hear anything, but if you're hearing something, it's audible and you just adjust R21 till you can't hear the tick or the knock. That's easy. So you can go either way with this. Uh, this is adjusted since there's no intensity control here. This will adjust differently than if I have a intensity control in this position. So this video is going to be different in adjusting R21 versus the next one when I have an intensity control inserted. So the high speed makes the tremolo louder, the low speed makes the tremolo softer. This point and this point, uh, as you increase the speed, amplify more, and if you turn the speed down, it gets softer. So set the speed to make the tremolo the loudest, and then we're going to adjust R21, where if you hear hearing the pumping, you want to bring it down slightly less than pumping, but if you're hearing a tick, this needs to be adjusted until you don't hear the tick, and then you need to adjust it where you're not hearing the talk and the knock, and then you just need to get down where you're barely hearing the pumping. As the value of R1 decreases, the tick's going to get louder. So you want to increase this. So in this configuration, R21 is going to give us a, something over 10 volts at this point in reference to ground, and it'll be about 12K. We've increased it. In the next video, you'll see that is a lower value. I point that out because when you get to the next video, you go, hey, that's not what you said last time. Well, I'm preparing you this time for what I'm about to say in the next video. This, control, this adjusts different. And then you're thinking, well, hey, if I can adjust the amplitude at this point, and especially this output here, I don't need a speed control or a uh, intensity control. I can just put a pot right there, and then I can adjust the volume coming out. You could, but this thing's a little bit touchy. Uh, just a, a couple, like three to 
5k difference in this it goes from I'm barely hearing it to I can't hear anything at all and you adjust it from that it's too loud it gets really touchy I haven't had much success here with putting a pot in here and making it really a worthy control uh, I adjust this to take care of the overall amplification out of the oscillator uh, amplifier and by uh, connecting the cathodes and putting it in a tail resistor I can adjust them both up and down and get do two things simultaneously. If you don't have this modification then you have to put a tail resistor on the oscillator side which may or may not be necessary but definitely on the other side you may have to put the tail resistor definitely on the amplifier side but I find adjusting them both with one resistor it works better for me. I have a lot more success with this and this is why I'm sharing the video. I've never known the uh, speed control to ever cause a tick by the way. So in the next video I'm going to uh, address adjusting the tremolo circuit having an intensity or depth control actually with the circuit. Thank you for watching.